Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a gradient-based Infinity logo all from scratch in Adobe Illustrator. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator and I've created a new document a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the view menu at the top, make sure my smart guides are turned on, my snap to point is turned on and snap to pixel is turned off. Next, we're going to grab the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to draw a circle. And with that circle selected, just select none as the fill. So we just have a black stroke. And we'll put that in the middle there. And then go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. This creates another copy of that circle. And we can hold down Alt and Shift on the keyboard and left click from one of the corners to scale to the center. Now this area in the middle is going to be white. We're going to knock that out later in the tutorial so we can actually see through that. So next we're going to select this smaller circle and again, edit, copy, edit, paste in place. Definitely some shortcuts there worth learning. But we're going to hold shift and scale up from one of the top corners until it snaps and aligns to this top edge. So these two need to be level. And we're going to do the same again. We can go edit, copy and paste in place. Or what we can do is just with our shape selected, hold alt and shift and drag down. Now shift will keep it perfectly vertically straight and alt will create a copy of that shape. And again, we can zoom in, check these both line up. Now this is quite important because otherwise if the, some shapes don't line up later in the tutorial, things will get quite complicated. Okay, so now we can drag over everything and from the alignment panel on the right, if you don't see that, just go to window and down to align. What we're going to do is align these horizontally in the center like this. And we can then select that medium circle and again hold Alt and Shift. We'll drag that down to create one more copy and then we'll just shift that copy to the left so it lines up with that left edge. Now at the moment all of these shapes have a stroke weight applied, they have some styling. If you'd like to see a wireframe view that removes any styling just to check everything lines up perfectly, you can go into outline mode by press pressing command or control Y and we can see a wireframe there. Everything looks good to me and it's command or control Y to come out of outline mode. So we're not going to do one on this right side here, but what we are going to do next is drag over everything and I think I'll just move this up here and again we can either go to edit copy and then paste in place or just hold alt and shift and drag down and we're then going to hover over one of the corners and rotate this around and you can see the number of degrees here now we need 180 degrees it's quite hard to get this manually as you can see so if we just hold down shift it will snap to 45 degree increments. So we can get that 180 rotation nice and easy. And we're now going to drag this up. So the top of this now needs to line up perfectly with the bottom of the smallest circle that we created at the beginning. And again, we can zoom in, press Command or Control Y to go into outline mode. Perfect. And there we go, we've created, well, we've created a mess of circles, but you can start to see the shape for our eight uh, or infinity symbol coming together. Now, for me personally, I like to create checkpoints while I do this. So I'm just going to select everything, hold Alt and Shift and drag a copy out there. One, because it's just nice to see the process looking back, but two, in case anything goes wrong, I've got all of these circles here before I started combining them together, which is what we're going to be doing next. So we'll just pop that back in the middle. Next, we're going to select the Shape Builder tool over here. And we'll just zoom in. Now with the Shape Builder tool, you can click in a segment, you can drag through well, multiple segments or shapes and it will combine them into a single shape. Or you can hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and you'll see the plus changes to a minus. 
and it will actually knock that out and remove it from the shape. Now, because this is going to be like a number eight infinity symbol, we're going to hold down Alt on these two smaller circles and left click. Now, because we have strokes here, it doesn't look like anything's changed, but it has actually just knocked those out. So when we come to adding our fills later, you'll be able to see that it, they won't be there. It'll just be transparent. So any background image or anything that goes behind it will be see-through. So now we can drag over everything again, and we're going to start combining all this together. So let's grab that Shape Builder tool and just start left-clicking on these segments and dragging through. Now, if you do do anything like this and you make a mistake and you think, oh, no, I've gone wrong, just go to Edit, Undo, have another go. So we'll drag this one around here. This is quite a large one in the middle. So if you don't capture everything on your first kind of go through, don't worry. You can just, you can see I'm just dragging through. And it's always a really good idea to zoom in nice and close as well. You can see this bit here, just missed that. So we'll just drag through and capture that back in. I hope there's another one on the other side as well because of course there is. And what else have we got? So we'll drag through this one. And then we've got this one. And there we go, looking pretty good. So you see that once you get familiar with the Shape Builder tool, it's incredibly easy to combine shapes together. And at the moment we have a variety of different stroke weights. If you do want a more linear version of this, to use, just go to your stroke panel with everything selected and just change the align stroke to the center and all the weights will be the same. However, we're not doing a linear version anyway, so that doesn't matter, but just a useful tip if you're interested. We're going to swap our fill and our stroke. So we now have no stroke and a black fill. Now it looks like a plain black, boring number eight, but if you press command or control Y, you can see in outline mode, we still have all of our shapes. They are just all the same color. So it just looks like this. And we can hover over these segments and see them selected. Now this next step is pretty awesome because we start to see it really come to life. So if we go over to our swatches panel on the right and just pick any two swatches, it really doesn't matter right now, but just double click them. The important thing is to check the global box because what this will allow us to do is later in the tutorial, once we've added all our gradients and we've kind of got everything working, we can instantly just change the colors by changing these two swatches. We don't have to go and manually re-add color to every different segment. So now what we can do is just pick one segment. So I'm going to pick this segment here and make sure the fill is selected. And from the gradient panel on the right, just click anywhere on the gradient slider and adds that default black to white gradient. So we're going to double click on the black swatch first and you'll see it brings up the swatches panel and we'll just pick that darker blue. And next we'll double click on the white swatch and pick the lighter blue. And you can see it's added our gradient graduating from the lighter blue to the darker blue. And you can change the type here as well. So we have linear, which graduates from one direction straight through to another, whether it's horizontally or vertically. And radial, which starts in the center and then emanates out towards the edges. And you can, of course, quickly reverse the gradient by clicking this icon here. So it depends what you're going for. So at the moment, we've got a light blue to dark blue radial gradient applied to this one segment. So what we're going to do next is drag over everything. And this is my favorite part in the tutorial because this is where the magic happens. We now click on the eyedropper tool. And if we left click on the gradient in this segment we've created, it will apply that same radial gradient from light blue to dark blue to every single segment. So watch this. And you can see we've just taken a massive leap forward and we've almost finished our logo. Now all of these segments are separate shapes so you can well you can pull them apart if you really want to but more than that you can select them and you could change one of them from a radial gradient to a linear gradient and swap that around so we'll do that for these inner segments here 
We could go and adjust the angles if we wanted to. So we could change that to 45. Something like this. It depends entirely what you're going for. We could take this one in the middle here that has a radial gradient and we could add a linear gradient. Move the lighter blue to the center and just hover over the bottom of the gradient slider. You'll see the plus icon appears and we can add a new swatch. And then we can double click that and select our darker blue. So now it goes from the darker blue to the lighter blue to the darker blue and we can add an angle on that as well, just to match the kind of flow of this larger segment. Now, if we bring these little diamonds in, we can adjust the dominance of one swatch on the gradient over another. So if I bring these in, you can see it makes this lighter blue very harsh in the middle, which we don't really want. But if I drag those out towards the edge, we can actually make a much smoother gradient that graduates a lot more softly from one color to another. And we can click on these again, so we could go in and bring these swatches in to make that more prominent. And once I've changed that one segment, I can just hold shift and select multiple segments. And again, use that eyedropper tool just to sample the gradient I want to use. And you can see it applies that to all of them. So we'll go back to these ones here. And I'll just bring a little bit more of that color back in. And we can go and adjust these gradients. Start messing around with angles a little bit, just until we get something that looks really cool. So I think something like this is looking pretty good. We've got a nice balance of the darker blues and the lighter blues. Now, remember, we just picked two random swatches. You could do this with any two swatches, but once you can kind of see where your colors are all coming together and you've got the, the right flow, you can simply just go back into these swatches, double click them, check the preview box and drag these sliders and it will adjust everything in real time. So we could go for a darker blue here, click OK. We can switch over to our lighter blue swatch. So we'll double click that, check preview. And we'll start adjusting this as well. And we'll just jump back to our blue one and you can see that we can actually make changes to this all in real time. Keep adjusting those sliders. And what this does with these swatches, it makes it effortless to change the color, but it also means that we don't have to go back into the gradient and start reapplying colors to different segments or anything we can just simply update it from those two swatches and you don't even have to just use two swatches you could even go and add some more color into one of these segments here and you could create a multicolor logo if you want and it's cool because we've got the process over here as well so we've got this to reference if we need to go back but there we go we've created our gradient based logo and we're done and there we go, we've created a gradient-based Infinity logo all in Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care, and I'll see you next time.